The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. Welcome to Tomorrow's World, where today I'm addressing the attack on patriarchy, otherwise known as an attack on male leadership in the family and society in general. This is an attack on the centuries-old order within society. Let me take it one step further. This is an attack on Christianity, the Bible, and the way God ordained society to function. This war on patriarchy is real, and is having a negative effect on families. Early television portrayed husbands and fathers in a positive light. Consider Ozzy and Harriet, and Father Knows Best, for those who are old enough to remember. Both men and women were shown positively, but it wasn't long before sitcoms portrayed men as incompetent, bumbling oafs who needed their wives to save them from themselves. Men became the butt of all jokes. The Honeymooners with Jackie Gleason was a good example. He was no intellectual or emotional match for his wife, Alice, who was witty, competent, and smarter. It wasn't long before virtually every sitcom adopted this approach known as the jackass formula. And that portrayal of men continues down to this day. We see it not only in sitcoms, but also in advertisements. Where does the woman with all the answers? She solves any office difficulty. She fixes the flat tire while the man stands helplessly by. She is physically stronger, a martial arts expert who takes on multiple men at the same time. We see the attack on male culture in academia and in the media in general. Where is all this leading? I'll be right back with the facts, and I'll also be offering a valuable resource, The Future of the Family. It's free of charge, so stay tuned. On today's Tomorrow's World program, I'm discussing the attack on patriarchy, showing that this attack against male leadership is real, showing the consequences for our world today, and showing what's really behind it. By all accounts, men are falling behind women in education, and this problem has been in the works for some time. Notice this CBS News assessment from as far back as 2002. School districts from Massachusetts to Minnesota to California report that boys are withdrawing from the life of schools and girls are taking over. Girls outperform boys in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college and graduate school, says Dr. Michael Thompson, a school psychologist who writes about the academic problems of boys in his book, Raising Cain. He says that after decades of special attention, girls are soaring while boys are stagnating. Girls are being told, go for it, you can do it, go for it, you can do it. They are getting an immense amount of support, he says. Boys hear that the way to shine is athletically, and boys get a lot of mixed messages about what it means to be masculine and what it means to be a student. Does being a good student make you a real man? I don't think so. It is not cool. A more recent report comes from U.S. News and World Report. It gives some historical perspective showing that gender equality in higher education, which existed for decades, suddenly made a turn away from the male gender. In the early 1990s, adult women were about as likely as men to earn a bachelor's degree or attend graduate school. But around the middle of the decade, women began to surpass men in college attainment. That trajectory has continued, as confirmed by a Pew Research report that pointed out that by 2010, there was an 8% gap between men and women graduating from colleges and universities with a bachelor's degree. In 2010, a record 36% of women ages 25 to 29 had attained a bachelor's degree. 
This compares with 28% of men in the same age group. Women surpassed men in 1992, and since that time the gap has continued to widen. There are many speculations as to why this dramatic shift occurred over such a short period of time. There are no doubt multiple causes, but let's explore one of them. According to Richard Whitmire in an Education Next interview, for the most part this is happening because K-12 through schools are shortchanging boys. Far too many boys drop out before earning a high school diploma. Worse, too many boys who do make it through high school are either unprepared for or unmotivated to do college level work. But wait a minute, I thought it was girls who were neglected. Some of you may remember the 1992 report titled, How Schools Shortchange Girls. It was sensational at the time, and there was an immediate push to solve what seemed to be a serious problem. But how many looked at the report carefully, beginning with the authors of the study? The left-leaning American Association of University Women, the AAUW for short. Dr. James Dobson gives background for this report in his book, Bringing Up Boys. It asserted that female students are invisible, ignored, disrespected, and denied their share of educational resources. The most widely disseminated finding was that teachers permit boys to speak or participate eight times more often than they do girls. But as with the rest of the conclusions, this turned out to be pure nonsense. While the accusation that girls were shortchanged was widely disseminated, the actual details were not. And this should not surprise those who recognize the leftist bias that has existed in Western media for more than half a century. According to Dobson, their data was based on an old 1981 study that actually said boys are reprimanded eight times more often than girls. So while boys were called out eight times more than girls for misbehaving, this was not the way it was reported. Instead, the AAUW report disingenuously made it out to mean that boys had an unfair advantage over girls. What were the results of this widely publicized, biased, and dishonest report? They weren't benign. Most studies have little impact on our lives, but this one did. It changed the way America's children are educated. And to this day, it affects America's culture and standing in the world. It brought about an immediate push to change schools. As Dobson writes, Although the report has been widely discredited now in the professional community for what it was, a blatant attempt to skew educational resources away from boys and to characterize girls as victims, the damage had been done. It resulted in an unfair distribution of available resources that continues to this day. Under heavy lobbying from the likes of the New York Times, Oprah Winfrey, the AAUW, the media in general, and others, the United States Congress passed the Gender Equity in Education Act. What this did was allocate hundreds of millions of dollars each year toward redressing the myth of bias against girls in school. It provided money, as Dobson writes, to reprogram teachers who were unconsciously sexist. The attack on patriarchy is part of a larger picture, the destruction of the family. Tomorrow's World publishes a special report on the future of the family. This compilation of articles includes don't underestimate the value of family and Satan's war on family values. Yes, there is a real spirit power bent on destroying the family, and his current success in doing so is obvious to anyone with eyes to see. This war against patriarchy is not only bad for boys and men, but also for women. Another article asks, Is Motherhood in Crisis? This special report, The Future of the Family, can be yours free of charge. All you have to do is pick up the phone and ask for today's offer. It's that simple. 
and I'll be right back to show you what is behind this attack on patriarchy. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Call now, 1-800-236-0531. Or write to us at the address on your screen, or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. And be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. We're discussing the attack on patriarchy on today's Tomorrow's World program. Before going further, let's review what we've seen so far and see if there are any conclusions we can draw from the events of the last few decades. Here's a simple timeline of events. In 1990, enrollment in colleges and universities were about equal between the sexes. In 1992, the biased AAUW report came out falsely claiming that girls were disadvantaged in school. A year later, 1993, the U.S. Congress passed the Gender Equity in Education Act to favor girls. And 17 years later, in 2010, the emergence of an 8% advantage favoring women over men receiving bachelor's degrees. In a CBS News interview, Dr. Michael Thompson, psychologist and author of Raising Cain, reported, Girls are so outperforming boys in school right now one statistician said he took it out to its absurd endpoint and said at the present trend, the last man to get his bachelor's degree will do so in 2068. One has to wonder whether the biased AAUW report and the Gender Equity in Education Act are related to this dramatic shift. Some authorities flatly state that they are. The AAUW report not only affected schools, but also created a cultural bias in favor of girls. Remember Bring Your Daughter to Work Day? This was a direct outgrowth of the AAUW report. Acting on research that showed adolescent girls received less attention than boys, this day was initiated in 1993 by the Ms. Foundation for Women. The intention was to give girls additional direct attention and an insight into work world opportunities available to them. It was to serve the multiple purpose of increased self-esteem for young girls as well as give them some ideas of the wealth of careers in the world. Thirdly, it allowed them more one-on-one -on -one time with mom or dad. The modern feminist movement has been with us for decades, but the deceptive 1992 report by the American Association of University Women which resulted in the 1993 American Congress Gender Equity in Education Act, tilted education away from boys to favor girls. But this is only the tip of the iceberg wrought by these feminists. We'll learn more about who these feminists are in the next portion of our program, but I want to remind you of today's free offer, The Future of the Family. In addition to the articles mentioned earlier, this report has an article titled, Fatherless Families, and it contains a two-page center spread showing how families have changed dramatically since 1960. There's also an article on rebuilding happy families. All of this is yours, free for the asking. Just pick up the phone and tell the operator that you want today's free offer. It's that simple. And I'll be back in 15 seconds to tell you who some of these feminists are and reveal their ultimate goal. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. As we've seen, there's a growing gap between boys and girls and men and women regarding education. That gap grew dramatically between 1992 and 2010. 
and that gap was a direct result of activism by modern feminists. So who are these women? The modern feminist movement exerts a powerful influence, not only on women, but also on boys and men. When we look at the lives of its leaders, we sometimes find tragic personal circumstances that fueled their activism. Other times we find Marxist ties, as is the case of Betty Friedan. It's too simplistic to characterize every feminist as being influenced by Karl Marx or coming from a dysfunctional family. But Gloria Steinem is an example of how one's dysfunctional past taints one's worldview. Consider her home life. The Steinems lived and traveled about in the trailer from which Leo carried out his trade as a traveling antiques dealer. Before Steinem was born, her mother Ruth, then age 34, had a nervous breakdown which left her an invalid, trapped in delusional fantasies that occasionally turned violent. She changed from an energetic, fun-loving, book-loving woman into someone who was afraid to be alone who could not hang on to reality long enough to hold a job, and who could rarely concentrate enough to read a book. Ruth spent long periods in and out of sanatoriums for the mentally ill. Gloria's parents sadly divorced when she was only 10 years old. Her mother's illness and all that that brought into her family dynamics clearly influenced Gloria's worldview. Perhaps her most famous quote was, a woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle. Or just in case you missed the intent of the statement, we can put it in the form of a question. Does a woman need a man any more than a fish needs a bicycle? While she professed not needing a man, many were shocked to learn that she married David Bale in September 2000 at the age of 66. Gloria is complex. Not all her complaints are without foundation, but her views are radical. She admits to being a radical feminist, and her influence has radically changed our world. In 1970, she wrote a treatise titled, What It Would Be Like If Women Win. The very title shows that she saw this as a contest between men and women. In it, she described her vision of a future utopian world. Free nurseries, school lunches, family cafeterias built into every housing complex, service companies that will do household cleaning chores in a regular, business-like way, and more responsibility by the entire community for the children. All these will make it possible for both mother and father to work and to have equal leisure time with the children at home. Another Gloria, Gloria Allred, refers to herself as a feminist lawyer on her website. A few of her high-profile cases lend credence to her claim. She represented seven children and their parents in a suit against Savon drugstores for separating boys' and girls' toys. The result was that Savon removed its gender-related signs. My guess is that it was adult activists rather than children that were behind the suit, and one has to wonder about the supposed harm. Why do people want to push trucks on girls and dolls on boys? Allred also filed a discrimination suit against the Boy Scouts of America in 1995. It seems that a girl wanted to join the Boy Scouts. Is there no safe haven for boys to be boys? What if boys want to join the Girl Scouts or be on the girls' track team? Taken to its extreme, few if any females would survive the competition if men were allowed on their teams. Some of the intellectual underpinnings behind the feminist movement came from Simone de Beauvoir. She confessed that, My father's individualism and pagan ethical standards were in complete contrast to the rigidly moral conventionalism of my mother's teaching. This disequilibrium, which made my life a kind of endless disputation, is the main reason why I became an intellectual. She became an atheist at age 14 that left her without an eternal purpose. How happy she may have appeared on the outside, there are hints that something was missing in her life, as seen by this statement. I am incapable of conceiving infinity, and yet I do not accept finity. 
I want this adventure that is the context of my life to go on without end. In the last portion of this program, we'll explore the unintended consequences of their war on patriarchy. But let me remind you of today's free offer, The Future of the Family. Here again are some of the articles found in this valuable resource. Don't underestimate the value of family. Satan's War on Family Values. Motherhood in Crisis. Fatherless Families. And Rebuilding Happy Families. Almost no one understands the real purpose of family, and our final article in this special report explains that God is creating a family. It explains why we are here and what it's all about. You need this vital resource, so call today for your free copy, and I'll be right back to show you the unintended consequences of the feminist attack on patriarchy. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Call now, 1-800-236-0531. Or write to us at the address on your screen, or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. And be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. Feminists and other social engineers since the 1970s have been attempting to deconstruct the very idea that men and women are different. What's their goal? Dr. James Dobson accurately predicted the following as early as 2002 in his book Bringing Up Boys. The feminists and homosexual activists want to dissolve the traditional roles of mothers and fathers and in time eliminate such terms as wife, husband, son, daughter, sister, brother, manhood, womanhood, boy, girl, masculine, and feminine. These references to sexual identity are being replaced with gender-neutral terms such as significant other, spouse, parent, child, and sibling. That may have appeared to be an overstatement at the time, but that is exactly what we see today. Examples abound in the United States and Canada and the United Kingdom where such nonsense is promoted. Note this report from Britain's Telegraph. Teachers should not refer to pupils as girls or ladies because it means they are constantly reminded of their gender, the government's former mental health czar has said. Natasha Devon told head teachers of the country's leading girls schools that they should be using gender neutral language when they address their students and added that the same applied for boys. Now, thankfully, not all Britons have lost their minds. Piers Morgan railed against such a notion, saying, It's preposterous, utterly preposterous. It's over. No more boys, no more girls, no more men, no more women. The world is over, Morgan said. Many Britons agree. In an unscientific poll by Good Morning Britain, 96% of the respondents agree with Morgan's take on the subject. In many ways, we now have a world turned upside down, even to the point where dissident feminist Camille Paglia was asked in Canada's Maclean's magazine if she thought women are now the dominating sex. In her answer, she expressed concerns for today's highly successful career women. She replied, The more women succeed and rise up in positions of power, the more remote they become from actual masculine energy. I'm concerned as a college teacher about the romantic and sexual futures of highly successful career women. She went on to say, One reason Sex in the City was such an enormous hit is that it expressed something that feminism won't admit. We don't know what we want. We don't know if we want children or not. My generation produced a sexual revolution, and your generation is stuck figuring out how it's going to work. 
Another woman speaking out against the feminist attack on patriarchy is Nicole Russell. She wrote the following 2016 piece in The Federalist. In today's enlightened age, women think they know what kind of man they want, but in reality, most don't. In fact, many women, unwittingly confused by the myriad feminist mantras bombarding them daily, seek the type of committed, romantic relationship with a man that will ultimately leave both her and him inherently dissatisfied. This is as much due to the ideology behind feminism's flawed ideas as the men who have been over the years subconsciously programmed to behave according to its dictates. It's never too late to figure out that men need to own their patriarchal prowess. If they did so, they'd soon discover this is what women really want. The attack on patriarchy is leaving both men and women confused. Families are in shambles. Men don't know the role they should play, and women live empty lives. In reality, the attack on patriarchy is an attack on God. As we read in the opening chapter of Genesis, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God He created him, male and female He created them. No room for gender neutrality here. Male and female is more than an anatomy. Boys are boys and girls are girls, not because of trucks and dolls, but because God made them different. Male and female think differently. And the one who made us male and female specially designed us for different family roles. It is God who inspired the injunction, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. Feminists don't realize they are pawns in the hands of a negative spirit influence, but their rebellion against God has done nothing to further the happiness of women. And man's abdication of his role as leader has left families in shambles. Boys are confused. Women are trying to act as men and are chasing dreams that leave them empty in the end. You need a copy of our free special report, The Future of the Family. Learn why God made us male and female, and what His ultimate purpose is for families. And be sure to come back next week when Richard Ames, Wallace Smith and I, along with guest presenter Rod McNair, will bring you more of today's news in the light of end time prophecies. Until next time, may the peace and truth of Almighty God and Jesus Christ be with you. To take advantage of today's free offer or view today's program now or anytime, go to tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.